All right, ladies and gents, it is time now for the Cleveland Browns. That's what we're doing. Um, kind of similar format, hopefully, to what we did last time. I'm going to try not to pause it and have to regather my thoughts, but sometimes stuff happens and you got to do what you got to do. A um, little bit different than the Giants. You can see it's not a terrible situation. Again, some teams it's just blue everywhere. As a reminder, blue means they're free agents today. Yellow or gold or whatever this is means they're in the final year of their contract. Obviously, some of these guys can and will be re-signed. Going to try to navigate that as best as I can, but I don't know as well as you do, and even you are not entirely sure. So um, we'll do what we can. And again, I kind of want to just do a preview of where my head's at beforehand. Um, obviously, we've got quite a few things that are more or less taken care of. Quarterback, tight end, not that it's 100%, but we got other needs. Running back. Wide receiver is interesting for a couple reasons. Obviously, you look at it and say, well, we have Jarvis and we have Odell, so, I mean, we're, we're good. We also got Donovan Peoples-Jones. But you can see a lot of guys that are on the way out, so depth is automatically an issue. On top of that, it's been every year since Odell got there that they've been talking trade. I don't know if that's a real thing or not, but it is somewhat of a concern. Um, on top of that, you look at what Odell's been able to do I mean, Odell ain't Odell anymore, right? It's just he's not the same elite prospect that is deserving of, of massive praise. Um, that's become clear as you look right here at the grades. 37th out of 127, 60th out of 122. He did have a good year 2018, but, you know, we're talking in the last four years, he had one really dominant year. So wide receiver is certainly a consideration right off the bat. Um Fantastic offensive line. I really like the offensive line. You've got um, a good amount of youth. Petonio is 30, J.C. Treader is 30, but Jedrick being 22 is fantastic. Wyatt is one of the best offensive linemen in football. He is only 27 years old. Jack Conklin, who you guys acquired, is 27. If we kind of look at the grading and whatnot, again, Wyatt Teller, just an absolute freak of a human being. Um, you've got this Dunn guy. I don't know. He apparently is doing a pretty good job. Um We've got, I'm trying to find the starters here, Joel Batonio at guard, just absolutely fantastic human. So the only concern really would be age if we really wanted to, um, but I just, I don't think I want to. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes, but that's clearly not a, a massive consideration. You come over to the defensive side of the ball, edge and defensive line is where it's getting a little bit iffy obviously miles garrett is fantastic olivier vernon i believe is out the door so finding a compliment to miles garrett is going to be important um sheldon richardson at 31 years old final year of his contract larry Ogunjobi is a free agent currently um there's just not a lot of bodies here right i mean who are the long-term guys we got joe jackson curtis weaver whatever um and again we come over here and look at our edge guys miles garrett is solid who else, right? Um, trying to think. We got who are the early investments? Nobody. I mean, obviously, Adrian Claiborne was a first round pick in 2011, but he's not a good football player. Um, Trayvon Young, you know, okay, sixth round pick. Uh, we got a free agent who hasn't played. Curtis Weaver is a fifth round pick that hasn't played. So it's just, it's, it's very, very, very weak behind Miles Garrett. So that's clearly a need. You look at defensive line, again, we got names like Sheldon Richardson, but what is he actually doing? He's declining at, at 30 going on 31 years old. Uh, Larry Ogunjobi, never really been all that great, right? Um, so we're kind of looking, okay, have we put any recent investments in? We got a third round pick here in Jordan Elliott. Jordan Elliott did not have a very good rookie year at all. So we're hoping we're hopeful that he's going to be able to step up, but we haven't seen anything so far. So this is a massive consideration for me along the defensive line in general, especially edge, but defensive line is also going to be important. Linebacker, I mean, we got Mac, but again, four of our what? Of our seven linebackers are free agents currently. Um, so that's obviously not great to start with. And then if we look at our linebackers in general, I think it's kind of assumed that we're going to need a little bit bit of help we did get again mac wilson but we're talking about a fifth round pick sion takitaki was a third round pick in 2019 i mean had a great run defense grade at least right here did take a little bit of a step so maybe there's a little bit of something there but we don't have a real solid linebacker so again just in general this area this front is not great 
Then you come to our DBs, especially corners, and again, we got free agent, free agent, free agent, free agent, last year, last year, last year. Now Denzel's obviously going to get paid. That's clearly our number one guy. I'm not going to get into an argument about the quality of Denzel. It is what it is. You guys love him. I'm a little bit more, you know, whatever. But, um, and by the way, I shouldn't, never mind. Forget it. It doesn't matter. I'm dumb. You're smart. Denzel's great. Doesn't matter. The question then comes in, who do we have after that? So you look at our DBs again. Um, at safety, you got Sandejo was our main guy, and he was just putrid. And I believe he's already out the door. Um, Carl Joseph, again, not very good. He was a 2016 first-round pick. I'm a little bit curious as he's shown... He has shown a lot more promise, so this was just a bad drop-off, but he's never been super dominant. So um, we do have Grant Delpit that hopefully is going to be able to step up. We still have not seen the guy, um, but hopefully next year he steps up and he's going to be really, really solid. But I still think safety needs to be somewhat of a consideration, maybe a little bit later if we're going to say that, uh, let's see, is Carl Joseph, Carl Joseph is... So I don't know. I don't. If we're keeping Carl Joseph, maybe we can say we've got two if Grant Delpit steps up and plays, but it's very iffy at best. Then again, you come over to corner. we got Ward, who graded out fine. Um, again, that's what I'm looking at. He's going to be our number one guy for sure. After that, though, you got uh, Terrace, Terrence Marshall. Not Terrace Marshall. That's a different guy. We're talking a seventh-round pick in 2014. I just, I mean, that's it's great to have him as, as some depth, but, you know, I don't know about all that. Uh, greedy was terrible in 2019 didn't see him so you know again the more optimistic fans are looking and say we don't need him man we got Denzel we got greedy we got these guys we're going to be fine but I'm not feeling super great about it so just kind of in general um, kind of similar to the Giants there's a lot of directions we can go here wide receiver is an option I want to stay away mostly from offensive line I mean you can't but even depth is solid look at how many guys we have here so I just think entirely staying away from it makes sense and then, you know, tackle isn't as deep and it's important, but they're so young. I think we're just good. So defense needs to be the main priority, first of all, um, especially the front. Linebacker's important. Maybe getting a corner or safety, you know, whatever. We'll see how it goes. Um, but then offensively, I'm really just looking for probably a wide receiver. I don't think tight end is completely off limits. Um, let's see. Austin Hooper was decent but you know again i don't really know how long it, these guys they're signing we got host i'll probably stay away from it and joke who's probably gone harrison bryant's the young up-and-coming guy and we've got to so we'll probably leave it alone so that's that's kind of where i'm at let's uh let's let's get started with this all right so here we are we got our little setup here's all our picks so we've got until 26 obviously we will consider moving up we do have a decent amount of picks we got first second third third we got two thirds two fourths we do have a little bit of capital to move up, and it's not like we have massive, massive... I mean, we, we obviously have needs, and we have a decent amount. We can use all these picks. I'm, I'm depending on, especially first round, because there's a couple things that, that I'd really like to get a solid football player. Um, linebacker, I'm a little bit iffy on trading up in the first round for, maybe in the later round if there's you know a quality player or they're starting to get thin or whatever, maybe. But you start talking about premier edge rushers that are falling or possibly premier corners if you want to get a second kind of like this really dominant duo um, or even a, a really premier wide receiver. But again, we'll see how it plays out, but I'm not afraid to trade up here because we do have a decent amount um, going for us. So I think when we get to 15-ish, we'll pause it and kind of reassess where things are at right now. And we'll let the Patriots pick. So they got a linebacker, which is probably going to possibly have. Kyle Pitts is still there. Now, I, well, Jalen Waddle is also still there, which is incredibly important. That That's the kind of guy, I think it's early to trade up. I mean, we're talking massive draft capital to get from 26 to 17. I don't know what it would take. We could try to let it run out. I mean, that is that would be, I know that's not your number one concern. A lot of you guys are rolling your eyes, but I mean, it's hard to, you know, I don't know. And look at the value. The value is crazy. It's hard to, to turn your nose up at that. The, the problem is at that point, it's like, well, what are we going to do with him? Right? Are we just getting rid of, of Odell today? It's just hard to, to just walk away from it. But I think the cap, draft capital would be too much. We do have Barmore, which would be very cool. Aziz, Ojalar. I mean, we've got, this is a great, 
stretch here. So let's at least let this run out a little bit. We're losing some of those guys. Kyle Pitts is still there. Why are you doing this to me? How do you not draft Kyle Pitts? I mean, do, I'm being serious. Now, I, 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 I'm not trying to be silly or goofy or anything, but can I walk? Can, can I walk away from this? I don't know how you just not. I mean, from 26 to 21, isn't going to cost all that much. And clearly, again, we can get Aziz would be fantastic. Bateman would be solid. Phillips, Zavin, Kadarius. I mean, all these are are needs. Tight end isn't as big of a need, but dude. This is kind of silly right now. Let's just see what it's... Let's just see. Let's just take a look here. Um, so it's kind of weird where I technically can't do that, but we can kind of trick the system a bit. Where are the Browns? Let's change this to the Indian. See, this is where pause would be fantastic. Indianapolis Colts. I'm just curious what they want from me. Let's see a fourth round pick, dude. A fourth round pick and we can get... Kyle Pitts. See, the other problem that I'm going to have is people are going to say that this is unrealistic, that Pitts isn't going to make it this far. So that's what's tempting me to just not do it because I don't want like a bad simulator thing to cause a problem. <sighs> but I mean, it is what it is. Stuff happens in life and I feel like I need to do it. It's just, I mean, it's just, it's purely a value thing. And again, if we are losing Odell and Jarvis is Kind of getting up in age if we take a look at how old is Jarvis. Maybe he's not. Maybe I'm lying. He's 29. Odell is 29. Um, I feel like we're going to need some weapons. And Austin is, well, he's 27, but I don't I don't know. I don't know, dude. I just don't know how you walk away from that. I think you got to do it, don't you? <laughs> Maybe I'll let it ride out like two more picks. <laughs> Let's just see what happens. They took Tony. So now we got... Tennessee. Is Tennessee going to take a tight end here? Who's going to be the first one? The Jets are going to take him. The Jets are going to take him. Man. All right. Let's switch it to Tennessee here. This and this. Can I give you a fifth? No. Can I give you my second fourth? No. Can I give you this? So you want my first fourth only. And we have a fourth. I'm just doing it, man. You guys are mad at me, you're mad at me, but I just, you can't turn, I mean, he's a top 10 talent that fell to us at the back, and it's going to cost me one of our two fourths. This wasn't my plan coming in. I even, I just said before we started that I don't want, uh, are we, we're recording, okay, I was having a panic attack there, although restarting wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. All right, that's what it is, man, we're going Kyle Pitts here. That, that is not what I was expecting at all, but, um. You know, again, we're, we're just we're adding weapons, and I think we're just going to say we're we're kind of good at at that. I know a lot of people are going to be mad at me. We need defensive help, and you just ruined our chance of getting the top talent, whatever. But again, I just I can't walk away from that, dude. I didn't want that to be the case, but it is the case. All right, let's pause it right here and see what we got going on. Um, again, we got some great options. I think we can let this ride. We need this, we need this, we could potentially use this, we could use this, we need that, we need this. I mean, we're good, man. Let's just, hopefully it's not just a straight up run on everything we need. So Tryon is sitting there. Um, Joe Tryon is sitting there. Let's take a look, see at what we get out of Mr. Joe Tryon. See if there's anything that kind of stands out, any reason. I mean, it's just, it's top of the board. It's possibly top need. 6'5", 262, he's not too small. Doesn't grade out well at all. Um, I mean, he fits the profile as an outside linebacker, so we got that going for us. Again, I like the size. Um, he can drop in coverage. I don't know if that's something you even ask guys to do. I um, mean, we could look at it if I cared enough, and I, I just, I don't. I, yeah, do I? Maybe I do. Real quick, real quick. Olivier Vernon, coverage, he dropped into coverage 44 times. So, um, 40, I mean, look at this, 41 pressures on 297 attempts is solid. And nine sacks, that's pretty solid. PFF wasn't overly impressed, not the greatest run defender, but as a compliment, as a pass rusher, it's hard to pass him up. Uh, I think it's going to be more important than Javon Holland, even though I think a lot of people like him a little bit more. Um, Jabril Cox, we can get linebacker later. I think this is what we got to do. I mean, there's not as many. There's a bunch of safeties, but I'm going try on here. That's what we're doing. So next up, we got pick 90. 
and we'll see what they say. We need cornerback defensive line. Yeah, we're kind of on the same page there. Uh, we're getting kind of close. Where are we at? Um, I mean, again, I don't want to move up for a linebacker. Lynn McNeil is a big body dude, um, not massively important. We'll just we'll let it go out a little bit here. And again, it's it's a ton of stuff that we could use, although that we're kind of... So linebacker clearly is at the top here, and I feel like that's probably where we should go. I'm just curious. We mentioned that if there is any hope at linebacker, it's probably going to be Mr. Taki Taki. Um, maybe you like Mac Wilson. I don't really know. But uh, Taki Taki appears to be purely... A run defender. Uh, 238 pounds, I don't think that's what you were expecting to get, but he's been garbage in coverage, according to Pro Football Focus. So it would be nice to get a guy that has a little bit of that ability. And as we looked at last week, Cameron McGrone is a pure run defender. Um, what do we have? We don't have much at corner. I know that's a big need, but um, again, we have our number one, so we just kind of need... That number two guy, defensive line. We haven't looked at this guy. Let's just take a look at what we get. And then before we officially pull the trigger on our newest linebacker, let's see what we get from our guy here. And we're in 2019. I keep messing that up. So again, took a really massive step. Great run defender, but also the pass rush took a giant step too. He went from three pressures. And we're talking about similar snaps here at Ohio State. Three pressures to 24 pressures. What in the world happened? That's since, oh, because he had 10 against Indiana. That's why. It's still it's still relatively high. Six against Penn State. Uh, four against Northwestern. Only had two sacks, but man, this guy's a terror. It's tempting, man. That's a that's solid. And I think, again, you can get linebackers a little bit later. I'm tempted to go defensive line here. Um, again, we don't really have super dominant and again if we just keep building up the i don't need to see olivier vernon but thank you for your for your time oh and we got another pick right here we might look you know what we could do it's more likely that we could just go back to back boom boom the question is who do we do first who are the vikings most likely to take i'm gonna go baron browning and hope that tommy's still there and that's what we'll do oh no oh you dirty dogs. You done me dirty. Ow. I hate the Vikings. For so many reasons. Oh, hurt me to my core, man. I wanted Tommy. I should have got... See, this is why you don't play games, man. Take the guy you want. If the linebacker's not there, you freaking would, man. That that just that kills me so. And there's linebacker. Why didn't I take a minute? You could have got Mr. Jamin Davis or Yamin or. Oh, that hurts me. All right, corner, defensive line, wide receiver, still a thing. Although we got a tight end, so I don't know if we want to do that. I hate I hate you so much. I <laughs> just that just completely. What do we got in Rodarius? Man, Tommy, my boy Tommy. I'm so, I'm dumb. That was a dumb, ooh, I like Tommy. There you go, you got the jump. Great coverage, solid tackler for being a smaller guy. I know it's OSU, but hey, maybe we just redeemed ourselves here. We're going to, I think we're going Tom, or Rodarius, sorry. I can't get Tommy out of my, I'm obsessed with Tommy. I think we're going Rodarius here. You Stupid, stupid. I hate. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. 123, huh? I've never been that invested. <laughs> <laughs> just the odds. The odds just kill me. You would, man. All right. What are we doing now? Um, Still could use a defensive lineman. Darius Stills is here out of West Virginia. I kind of like that. Still could do wide receiver, cornerback if we want to kind of double down kind of thing. I don't hate doing that. Safety is still a thing. All right, let's ride it out for a bit. We lost that guy. 
Lost another corner. We lost, of course, we lost our defensive line. We got a long way to go here. What do we got? I'm just going to get Trey Sermon and ram it down your throat. I'm just kidding. We're not getting Trey Sermon. So a lot of wide receivers. Our Darius is, is taunting me. And look at this. It's just it's just wide receivers. So we might end up doing that if, if we lose our Darius. But our Darius is tempting. What was I saying about the safeties? So we're... I don't know if Carl Joseph, the plan is for him to come back. I could Google it real quick, but I don't want to. We do have Grant, like I said. Um, I feel like that might be kind of a need. I'm really tempted to move up for a safety here. What do we have? Not a lot. Fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. And I try not to trade future picks because that seems kind of lazy, you know, so we don't actually lose anything, but... It's also a, we do have Caden Stearns if things don't pan out, and we could just go wide receiver. <sighs> come on, baby, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We got our Darius. All right, let's let's just check the man out. Can we just do like a half a name and it'll still work? Five eight one seventy eight, smaller guy, surprisingly plays mostly strong safety. Did drop off a bit. 2019 was his, you know, giant, fantastic year. He had five interceptions that year. This year, he gives up three touchdowns, didn't have a single pick. That's brutal. Didn't give up a single touchdown in his first two years, gives up three this past year, didn't have a single pick, did have five pass breakups, but dude, an 11.6. And it's it's one of those things, too, I think I did in my last mock, where it's like, you know, maybe. And, and again, he got off to a slow start. Look at this. They didn't, they didn't play weeks one, two, three. He comes out, he's really slow. And then just kind of kills it here from week 10 on. Um, if we look, he didn't give up a single touchdown from week 10 on. He had three uh, pass breakups toward the end of the, the season. You know, maybe this is part of the reason he fell as much as he did. Obviously, this is his ceiling, which is massively high. Let's just look at what he did in 2019. Um, I mean, look at that, the consistency. He had one semi-bad game but this guy just played great football and these are decent programs you know I'm, I'm trying to talk myself into it and i'm doing a decent job but it's definitely iffy but we're getting later in the, in the this is what you get at pick 123 you know um other options we've got let's take a look at caden stern see if that's maybe a little bit more intriguing again this the size is so 61207, this is more of a safety, a, a traditional safety thing, but you're not seeing much other than he fits the mold. What are you getting? What's the upside here? I kind of like rolling the dice a little bit with an Ardarius. We do have we still have wide receiver as an option. Um, I'm I'm calling Kyle Pitts a wide receiver is the reason I'm kind of staying away from it, but it is still an option. We might be kind of getting thin sooner than later. Um what have you done with your life? You have nothing here. Okay. Well, I'm not interested in that, in being that. Uh, we'll look at Tamori and Terry, and then I think we've made our decision unless this guy really speaks to me here. 64210, gigantic human being. Oh, was I in the wrong? I bet that's what it was. That's what the problem was. I was in the wrong thing. Receiving grades. That's all right. This is our final, final countdown. So, again, we get the drop off. We don't have it as high of a ceiling. Um, I don't know, man. Big dude, 18.8 yards per reception. <sighs> he had... Oh, that's 2019 again. I was like, how did he have so few? So he did crack 1,000 yards last year when... I don't know. I, th I think I just... I, I have an easier time talking myself into Ardarius. And he's top of the board, so we're going to go that route. We're taking safety Ardarius Washington out of TCU. It's high risk, high reward, you know? It's... um kind of boom or bust but that's the territory we're in and I, I just when you get later on you're kind of going that route you're looking for guys that have that high upside and maybe there's like a 20 percent chance they reach that or even a, a 15 percent. but you kind of roll the dice because 15 percent of a guy being a truly elite prospect compared to you know just kind of nothing i don't know the, the the lack of defensive linemen is making this oh there's my man quinn it's making this even more painful but let's take a look at this guy here um, it is a position you can get later on, defensive line, and still get some talent. Um, 6'5", 340. I mean, it's been a slow decline, 79, 77, 70, 68. It's not getting better. 
Um, not what you want to see. 340, I mean, he's clearly just a big body. I mean, I'm kind of in the I'm willing to reach territory because um, I haven't satisfied that yet. Where are we looking here? Let's just see if anybody jumps out. And again, yeah, maybe they'll fall, but maybe you just take the guy if you want him because we're not going to be stupid about it anymore. Mr. Jerome Johnson, he's a little bit more of a smaller guy, which is nice because you'd hope that he can pass rush, but clearly that's not his thing. Does deem to seem to be a decent defensive uh, lineman in terms of run defense, but again, terrible year in 2020, and that's that is somewhat of a red flag. Or you can look at it from the other perspective and say it was a weird year, like they you know they weren't able to go train and everything else, but you get him back in the training room with his boys, and there's that that whole thing, and he just feeds off it. You're not getting a pass rusher, but, you know, you get a decent enough run defender. Eh. I like him better than Tadaryl Slayton. Um, how late is our next pick? Because I don't want to be too crazy. We're in the fifth round. We have 187, so I don't know if Goldwire makes it. Let's see what this guy's doing. Do -do -do. 6 6 3 oh, 5 Big, long, lanky guy. You get a little bit more of that pass rush. Not super fantastic, but 16 out of 217, 14 out of 175. What is that, 8-ish percent? Yeah. I mean, he's, he's kind of one of those decent across-the-board guys, which is fine. Um, I don't know. He's, he's probably good depth is what he would be. Let's look at... See, this is now we're getting a little far because we pick at 153, so I don't think I want to do any of that. Um, we could do another edge if we would just want to get some more depth. We could do another corner if we want to get more depth, which actually would probably make more sense because we got a corner later. So let's look at this guy. Uh, that didn't work out very well. And Keith Taylor and see if we can find somebody. Again, just looking for some more depth, looking for some more competition for that number two, three spot. Um, I mean, he's, he's a good tackler at 180, 195. I don't know if he's going to pull that off in the pros. I don't know how much stock I put in that. Coverage fell off, but he was good at it last year. He does give up a ton of touchdowns. I hate that. Four, five, three, three. Um, he always gives up more touchdowns than he has interceptions. He had no pass breakups this year. He's a smaller guy, so you know the upside is real. It's hard to find it. Let's see what we get with Keith Taylor. Kind of torn. It gets tough when you get in the later rounds, you know. But I do like the upside. Real tall guy here. No good as a as a run defender, but I kind of don't care, right? If you have some coverage ability, maybe that's that's worthwhile. Um, again, hasn't had a single interception in four years at Washington, and and that's not the most important stat, but it does mean something, you know. Um, and again, seven touchdowns, no interceptions. I don't know. I mean, he's got the height. Maybe you can coach him up a little bit. I don't like any of this. Let me see what we get out of Rumpf. Give me something. Just somebody call my name here. Not you. I mean, he's good at the one thing that matters, pass rush. We got 44 pressures out of 240. That's crazy. And then you look at last year, 48 out of 198. He gets tons of sacks. 6'4", 235. He's got the speed kind of thing going on. You're calling my name, man. I mean, he's not going to give you much in terms of run defense, although 2019, he was a stud in that category. This is kind of what I'm talking about, right? He's a guy that was, you know, if, if we were, if 2019 was his final year, he'd have been gone by now. 2020 comes along, he has a bad year. Everybody's like, eh, you know, he's not that great. They probably watched, not necessarily the scouts, but, you know, the media folks are watching a lot of 2020 tape. They don't like him. Might be able to get a steal here. Um, does a little bit of coverage as an outside linebacker, so he fits what we do. 39.6 faster rating when targeted. One target, zero receptions. Kudos to you on that one. Um... I like him. I'm, I'm going to do it. It might not be the biggest need that we have, but we do need more depth. I think he's a good football player, and that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for guys in the late round that can be good football players. It's not just about checking boxes. Just get a defensive lineman because we need one. Sorry, getting a garbage defensive lineman doesn't help our team. We're taking Rumpf. That's all there is to it. We're getting some additional depth at edge, and we'll see how this pans out. Man, these guys are not going. Nobody wants the running backs, man. If you need a running back late, this is a... You know, you got a good shot at it. Are we up? No. So we got Ambry Thomas. Let me, let's just, let's, uh, okay, we're on the clock. Fine, great, continue. Um, Ambry Thomas is there, right? So if we wanted to go that route, do we have a defensive lineman? 
What do we got for defensive line now? We can look at a couple other guys. So this is where we left off. So perfect. That's where I stopped because I figured this guy would still be there. And he was. I made a good decision for once in my life. Come on now. Give me something here. 6'4", 321. He's a big old boy. He still has a good pass rush grade, though, which is impressive. 21 pressures on a 257 attempts is solid. And again, this is what most people see. Three pressures or three sacks. He doesn't do anything. He's not very good. But that's not bad, dude. And as a run defender, he's pretty solid. I'm... I'm digging him, man. I'm dig he's a big old boy. He's mostly going to be your your you know nose tackle type, but um, you get a nose tackle that has some ability to bring pressure, especially this late. I'm not opposed to that. Let's see what Chauncey's got. I think I got my answer, but let's take a look at a couple guys and just make sure that we know what we're doing. This says edge rusher, so obviously there's a um, difference of opinion. So we're gonna, not going to go that route because we're going to assume that, that uh, PFF is correct and that's an edge rusher. Shout out to uh, NFL Mock Draft Database. Maybe take a second look at that. Let's look at one more guy. We're getting way too late, but just for that. You know what? I'm not even going to do it. This is my guy. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. One more pick. What are we thinking? So, again, wide receiver is a consideration. I don't really know how I feel about it. Let's, I don't really like their list as much. We got a safety we got two corners. We got two edge rushers. We could double up on defensive line. Oh, linebacker. Linebacker. Did I touch linebacker? I can't even remember. I can't keep stuff straight. Oh, we did. We got Baron Brown. Yeah, that's right. How could I forget? That guy's a curse. He's, he's going to be terrible for our team just because he's a curse. I can tell you that right now. He cursed our team. Um, all right. See, look at this. Oh, wait. We're, <laughs> I was going to say, look at all the defensive linemen sitting here. This is great. Um... Not a lot of defensive linemen. We could still go that route and try to find somebody, but I mean, wide receiver's been calling us this whole time. Let's just take a wide receiver. Um, let's pick one of these two, unless they're just both terrible. Can you please copy and paste correctly for once in your miserable life? Imater baby. I've looked at this a thousand times, but I can't keep anything straight. Uh, receiving grades. Again, I love 6'2", 220. That just kind of brings that whole excitement level of he's, he, and if nothing else, he has that. 13.5 yards per reception, um, 2019, 631 yards. I mean, obviously, there's there's not a lot here. I want to get excited about him because I like his name, but, I mean, there's just not a lot here. Let's see what we got out of our other guy here, Josh Palmer. We don't have to go top of the board. Ooh, oof, 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 oof. So we got the progression for the receiving grade, 47, 68, 65, which is about the same, and then he kind of, we'll call it a breakout year here. Um, clearly the first half was what was carrying him, and then he kind of fell off a little bit, but, um, I mean, you know, 400 yards a season, probably because he's not the number one guy in Tennessee, I would assume, 14.8 yards per reception, I don't know, slot percentage, roughly a quarter of the time in the slot, career slot percentage, 17%, you know, I don't know, I like him more than a matter, baby, that's for sure. Do we have two corners already? Should we avoid that? We don't have two corners. So let's look at our corners here. Always love getting a badger. Not because they're good pros, but, you know, I live in Madison, so there's that. They're not generally <laughs> super great football players. Um, smaller guy, again. Yuck. Sorry, but yuck. Let's look at Tay Gowan. Putting a lot of work into this seventh-round pick, man. Got to get it right. Well, just show me what so this is kind of weird if you look at when he played 2019 at UCF 2017 Miami of Ohio but dude look at 2019 so obviously this is part of the reason the guy falls he plays for a Miami Ohio six snaps 2018 he doesn't play football 2019 he's UCF 2020 he doesn't play so the guy's been in football since uh going back to 2016 it appears but he didn't really play in 2016 so I don't know if it's injury issues or what, but you want to talk about a high upside guy. I mean, what's up? 80 overall coverage grade, 54.9 passer rating when targeted, two touchdowns, two interceptions, seven pass breakups. I think we found our guy, 6'2", 185. I'm digging it, man. I like him. Let's do it. Let's do it. That's what we're doing. Matt Bushman, and, and Matter Baby goes Mr. Irrelevant. I appreciate that. That's the word. That's what it's called, right, Mr. Irrelevant? I'm pretty sure it sounds weird saying it. So there we go. Again, the, the thing that kind of threw this whole thing off is Kyle Pitts sitting there. And again, that might have just 
probably a lot of people clicked off at that moment. But again, if I'm if I'm making this realistic, it's just one of those things I can't not do it. And it's going to help. I mean, it's not like, well, we can't play him because we got already Austin Hooper. Dude, Austin Hooper can take a hike. Kyle Pitts is the guy. He's going to blow this thing wide open. And when you think about it, Baker, Kyle Pitts, Jarvis, Odell, Donovan Peoples-Jones, like that's that's the thing. And then our running back, the offensive line, just, oh, oh, it's beautiful, right? It's it's weird. It's not the way we wanted to go. Kind of need some wide receiver depth. And I don't know, maybe we keep Rashard Higgins around. I don't know what we're doing at wide receiver. I don't know. We'll figure that out when we figure it out. Um, there we go. But that's, that's what we're doing. And the offense is going to be just lethal. So whatever. So then we go and get... Joe Tryon, as well as Chris Rumpf, to add a little bit of depth here because we are losing Olivier Vernon. We got Miles Garrett and a bunch of other guys. Again, this is just a lot of competition, right? We got a lot of competition right now. We should have a pretty solid rotation and hopefully a really good number two. Uh, linebacker, we get Baron Browning, who cursed our entire team. That was a massive mistake. But as a football player, hopefully he comes in. Again, he's a little bit better at coverage than you get with Cam McGrone, who is also available. And I don't want two Blake Martinez's on the team. So you get two guys that should be pretty solid. Hopefully Browning can do a decent job in coverage. Cornerback, we added a little bit of depth. And again, competition, Rodarius Williams and Tay Gowan. Tay Gowan, high risk, high reward kind of a prospect. Seventh round, I'm fine with that kind of thing. Um, and again, building up that defensive front, as well as having um, already having Denzel means we don't it's not massively urgent, right? We should be able to get to the quarterback pretty quickly. Um, we make them a little bit more one-dimensional if we build up the defensive line, hopefully. And, and, you know, it just takes some of that pressure off. But either way, we should have some talent there getting to cornerbacks. Um, safety, our Darius Washington, again, I think is is a decent need for the team getting a safety, and it's just going to help us on the back end. And then finally, it took us a while, but we got a defensive lineman. I do like Tonga. Still upset we didn't get the guy in the third round, but I do like Tonga. Um, we may need to do a little bit of work here up front because the guys that we have, we're getting thin, we are lacking talent. That may be something we need to explore, see who's still available in free agency, see what we can do. Um, again, I like what we got. I like the edge. I like the linebackers. I think the DBs got a, a decent amount better. Um, and our offense is going to be the focal point, clearly. But I still would like to get some. I mean, Sheldon Richardson is not a bad football player, but either way, he's in the final year of his contract, and Ogden Joby probably is gone. Jordan Elliott, maybe he takes a step. If he does, we might be good, but, you know, it, it's something to consider. But either way, overall, I think I'm, I'm more or less pleased with this. Had a couple curveballs thrown at us, but um, I'm good with it. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think about the format in general, but also the... Um, the draft and what you would have done differently, especially the Kyle Pitts thing. What would you have done in that situation? Because again, I just, I didn't want to do it, but I couldn't get away from it. Um, otherwise, please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, hit the little bell notification, hit a like on this uh, show. It's not a podcast. I keep wanting to say that because I have a podcast. Um, I got nothing else. I'll catch you next time.